Hello, everybody. My name is Graham Elwood, and you are watching, you see it right there, Political Vigilante, Make Gotham Great Again. Yes. A great way to support this show is do what Alex Talk has done and support us at patreon.com slash Graham Elwood, where you can submit articles like this. This is from the New York Times. How police justify killing drivers. The vehicle was the weapon. And I'm going to show you in a second. This is the thing. The cops are always like, and there's all these instances. I'm going to show you the statistics and everything that's done been done from this study. The cops say, oh, this guy was in a car. We, we thought that he was going to try to kill us with a, with a weapon, with the vehicle was the weapon. He was driving at us. We had to shoot. I'm not going to show you. And this article shows no. A lot of cases, the guy was driving away. A lot of times they jump in the middle of, in front of the car. Cops put their own lives at risk, jumping in front of the car like some stupid action movie. I mean, and I'll put the link in the show notes for the full article. Read the full article. It goes into a lot of specific examples of how the cops just, boom, just shot at this car. Just shot these cars up. And it's insane. Again, it, the problem is how we train our police. And then they're never held accountable when they do this crazy shit. People in other countries are like, what? Your cops have guns and they just shoot at car? Like, unreal. The vehicle was a weapon. This, this, that's what they always, oh, the vehicle was a weapon. It's used, the vehicle is used in the same way as, oh, I thought he had, he had something in his hand. It was a, it was a cell phone or he reached into his pocket. You told him to show you his ID. Like the, oh, the vehicle was a weapon. And I'm going to show you that it's <laughs> ex cops are like these, these cops shouldn't be doing that. It's not safe for the police to do this anyway. The vehicle was a weapon, right? That's the, that's the term that they always use. In a New York Times investigation of car stops that left more than 400 similarly unarmed people dead over the last five years. In about 250 of the 400 seemingly avoidable deaths, the Times found that police officers had fired into vehicles that they later claimed posed such a threat Relative to the population, black motorists were overrepresented among those killed. Shocking. Really? The cops killed more black people in America? No way. I thought we were the land of the free. Always using an excuse. Always. The country's largest cities from New York to Los Angeles have banned officers from shooting at moving vehicles. The U.S. Department, uh, Justice Department has warned against the practice for decades. But we're still doing this in smaller and mid-sized cities. Police academies don't even train recruits how to fire at a car. The risk of injuring innocent people is considered too great. The idea of stopping a car with a bullet is viewed as wishful thinking. What do? How are we training these cadets? We just showing them action movies? Just they just boom, boom, shoot at a car. Like, what are they watch? What are we watching? Old episodes of TJ Hooker? What what? Bad idea. Bad to do, said Carmen Best, the former Seattle police chief, in an interview. If you think the vehicle is coming toward you, get yourself out of the way. But this is part of the whole police mentality. And especially since it's over uh, proportionate to blacks. It's because the cops are, are extensions of the old slave catchers. That's why you see like a black guy walks away from a cop and they just shoot him in the back. I mean, we've, how many videos have we seen that from, from, from Jacob Blake to, I mean, I remember five, six years ago, before I even started doing this show, a cop in South Carolina did that guy was ran, ran away and he shot an unarmed guy in the back who was running away. Cause it's like, we got to catch him. We're not going to let you get away. So someone's in a car, we're going to let them get away. We have all these insane, this is, this, this study doesn't even go into all the insane crashes. Over the summer in, in Southern California, the cops were chasing some guy, went through an intersection and of course, an innocent person died. Why do you need to chase this guy? You got his license plate. Show up at his house. Like, why are you doing high speed chases that put everybody else at risk? It's the same thing shooting at a car. Where are those bullets going to go? And your intention is to what? 
kill the driver. So let's say you shoot the driver, then the driver goes out of control. So the car that's speeding, now the driver's dead and can't drive it. So now we have an out of control car just smashing around, killing people. Idiots. Nine officers have been fatally run over, pinned or dragged by drivers in vehicles approached for minor or nonviolent offenses in the past five years. So that's like, so that's, well, see, that's why the cars are dangerous, but let's get, let's look closer. But in many instances, local police officers, state troopers, and sheriff's deputies put themselves at risk by jumping in front of a car. So if you're a cop that doesn't want to get injured by a car, don't jump in front of one. Can't let them get away. What are you doing? Like, so you put yourselves at risk? To stop a, a, a man versus car, car wins. I hate to break it to you guys, even with your gun. Then aiming their guns at the drivers as if a Hollywood movie, according to body camera footage. So they think they're in a Hollywood movie. A car comes speeding at them. They jump in front of the car and shoot at it. And then, gee, they get run over. What do you what, like? So what's the, what are the cops going to say? Well, you know, if we had a bazooka, if we had a, you know, a rocket launcher, then we could blow these cars up. I'm sure there's cops that, that have thought that, well, if we had, if we could rocket launch, then we could blow the cars up. Gee, there's no collateral damage from rockets. Good call. Often the drivers were trying to get away from officers, edging around them, not toward them. Again, there's video footage backing all of this up. The footage shows, and the officers weren't in the path of the vehicle when they fired. You see many where bullets are in the back of the car, in the side of the car, said Jeffrey Albert, a criminologist at the University of South Carolina, who has researched high-risk police activities for more than 30 years. In the 90, in the high 90, high 90 percentile of cases, I've seen the person just trying to get away. So the person is just trying to get away, avoid the cop, and the cop either gets in the direct, gets in front of the car or shoots at the car as it's going away. And then the cop says on the stand, which is a lie, oh, I was, I was afraid for my life. When a car's pulling away from you and you shoot at a car that's pulling away from you, how are you afraid for your life? So cops watching this are like, Graham, you're too hard on the cops and what are we supposed to have? No cops and they're just supposed to have squirt guns. <clears throat> People don't trust police because of shit like this. This is why if you were a cop, you would want civilian oversight because cops that just flip the fuck out and shoot at a car that's pulling away from them, that's bad for cops. If you're an active duty cop, and I know some active duty cops, you would want civilian oversight so that if you're, you, you're not happy with how police, you know, police are viewed poorly now, police don't trust you, all these videos, and, oh, it's hard for me to do my job. You would want civilian oversight to say, yeah, we got out the bad apples. If there's just a few bad apples, as you cops claim, you would want them out so that you, the good cop, look good. But the video footage, you guys, the video footage, I'm sorry. This guy's been studying this for 30 years and he's like in the high 90 percentile. The person was just trying to get away. Some officers who've totally shot motorists didn't appear to be in any jeopardy at all. The Times Review showed, in some cases, the vehicle was stationary, even incapable of moving, and they still shot at it. And then claimed, oh, I felt my life was in danger. From an unmoving car. Let's not call China an authoritarian police state when we don't address the fact that we have authoritarian police state. Cops can just kill you and then say, oh, I was afraid for my life. Off the hook. Cops off the hook. Show me all those cops that have been arrested. Barely even are charges brought up. The nation's 25 largest cities have since adopted similar bans. Some carve out exceptions for terrorists aiming vehicles into crowds. So let's say a terrorist is driving towards a crowd of people and they try to shoot at the tires or something like that. Okay. 25 major cities already have bans on this. So if you, does your city have a ban on this? You should ask your local lawmakers. Does your local sheriff's department, maybe you live in a rural area? It's unsafe. It's unsafe for the cops. 
and it's unsafe for the people. And cops are supposed to serve and protect, not shoot and get acquitted. I thank Alex Talk for submitting this to us. Um, again, you can support the show at patreon.com slash grandbelly. I'd love to live in a country where I trusted the police, but I don't. I've had the police help me out for sure. I'm not going to sit there and say police haven't helped me out. I'm not going to say there hasn't been times when there was some crime and I called the cops and the cops showed up and I appreciated them doing their jobs. But then I'm a white guy. And I know that the cops, and I, but I saw the cops during the George Floyd protest beat the shit out of friends of mine. One cop almost ran me over. They just overreacted. The cops, I, I saw the cops overreact in Santa Monica with a, at the time, female mayor and female police chief, both who had to step down. <laughs> so we have to retrain the police to not just be these like trigger happy. <laughs> And also, this is another reason why free health care, free college, and, you know, a Green New Deal with a jobs guarantee and universal basic income would actually make the streets safer. Because how many crimes are financially motivated? And we need civilian oversight of our police departments, just hands down. Cops investigating themselves when there's a crime is just like criminals getting to investigate themselves. Criminals don't get to investigate themselves. The district attorney goes, <laughs> no. Civilian oversight. And the district attorneys aren't going to file charges against the cops because they need the cops in, as eyewitnesses in many, many of their cases. So they're gonna, always going to go easy on the cops. Always. Jackie Lacey, that's in L.A., that's what she did. She wouldn't file charges against cops. She wouldn't. So you need civilian oversight. You need civilian oversight. And believe me, cops, if there's any cops watching this, if you had civilian oversight and more money was going to social services and homeless programs rather than like the city of Los Angeles, it gets 54% of the city's operating budget, 54% of the budget. We don't have money for schools. We don't have money for homeless, but we got money for cops to have armored vehicles and military grade equipment. Gee, that sounds a lot like our foreign policy. We don't have money for free college. We don't have money for Medicare for how are we going to pay for it. We got money to bomb poor countries. We got money to give cops armored vehicles to go into poor neighborhoods and blow up. LAPD blew up a city block this summer. I grew up trusting the cops. I grew up watching cop shows thinking cops were cool. They were the good guys, a few bad apples. I grew up with that. And that has been completely ripped away by the reality of how they are, actually are. I'm tired of being ashamed of the police. I'm tired of being ashamed of this country. This country is a authoritarian right-wing police state that bombs the shit out of poor people, beats the shit out of poor people on its own soil, Spends money on war and cops rather than help its own citizens. So I'm sick of it. And if you're not, then this isn't the show for you. Go watch fucking Sean Hanratty on Fox and Friends or whatever the fuck that idiot's talking about. Because if he got his ass kicked by the cops, he, would, he wouldn't like it. But he thinks because he's a rich white guy, he's protected. And he is. Follow the money, connect the dots, get the truth. Shave your knuckles for justice. Boom. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching. We are still in our, like, ninth month of demonetization from YouTube. So support what we're doing at patreon.com slash Graham Elwood or rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood, which is a blockchain cryptocurrency platform. It's free to sign up and there's a premium level at $10 a month. And for that, you get everybody on the platform's premium content. Myself, Lee Camp, Ron Placone, Jimmy Dore, Whitney Webb, Kim Iverson, Abby Martin, and many, many others. You can also support what we're doing at Venmo at Graham Elwood and go to GrahamElwood.com. We have a PayPal button and a PO box. I also have crypto wallets, which are all in the show notes. Thanks for supporting what we do.